Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. So before we answer the question, how multi-tenant is your storage, let's talk real quickly about why and what multi-tenant storage is. So multi-tenant storage is the concept of making sure we can assign specific storage resources to specific virtual machines. A very common need in cloud environments because we've got subscribers from different businesses and each will have their own, they'll be buying different capabilities and performance and things like that. And so we wanna make sure that if one subscriber has a real busy process, it doesn't impact the performance of another subscriber. But we're seeing interest in the enterprise now because if you can think about it, the enterprise kind of has subscribers. They're called lines of business, and they, each of these lines of business have applications and different requirements like that. And so enterprises now increasingly are interested in sort of a tenancy concept to their storage. So that's the why. Now let's talk about what it is. Basically, I've got drawn up here is a, uh, a, a very simple uh, virtualized environment. I got four hosts and uh, a bunch of virtual machines running. Now let's say I want to make sure that uh, this particular VM gets some specific storage resources. It, without multi-tenant storage, probably what I would do is I might try to give some buffer credits on the storage network, and then I might hard allocate or dedicate specific drives within that environment to that virtual machine. Okay, but now look at what I'm, everything I'm still sharing. I, I can give some buffer credit so I can kind of get a little bit better performance here or make sure this guy gets the best of the worst performance. Uh, but remember, this storage system has a controller and that controller has CPU and memory, right? So really all I'm doing there is controlling the, the hard drive or the, the media part of this, right? So I'm not, I've still got a lot of variables here that could cause me problems if I start to have a, a bunch of these virtual machines demand performance more so than uh, say I have allocated. The other challenge with multi-tenant storage is I wanna make sure, let's say this VM right here is a lower profile VM. Maybe the guy's paying for, let's call it bronze service. Well, I wanna make sure that that particular virtual machine never sees great performance because I don't want to spoil him with platinum and then all of a sudden because I start adding other VMs or whatever he gets the performance he was paying for bronze and then calls me up and complains and says hey I'm not getting any good performance anymore well no you're getting performance you paid for I don't want to have that even have that conversation I want to make sure I control what kind of performance he gets now all of this sounds pretty sophisticated I've got to go in and there are software out there now that can allocate on a percentage basis uh, the different resources here uh, and, and make sure that specific VMs get a specific level of performance. Uh, many will say, okay, let's assign a, a certain number of IOPS, IOs per second, to each one of these virtual machines. And then they'll guarantee that those virtual machines get those IOPS no more, no less. And that's a very good start. But again, there's shared parts of this that concern me. Number one, that controller, and number two, the drives. So what we really need to be able to do is go in and hard allocate as much of this as we can because that eliminates the variables, right? Uh, always remember one of my key lines, success in life in IT is the elimination of variables. So how, how can we eliminate some of these variables? Well, what we could do is go in and actually allocate at a core level the CPU and specifically subscribe to a certain amount of memory. Then we could also hard allocate the drives to that particular VM. So let's take that subscriber model. As a subscriber, I'm, let's say this is a, uh, I don't know, 32 core uh, system with uh, 100 uh, hard drives and 25 SSDs, right? So as a, let's say I need to build a, a, a middle of the road sort of virtual machine. I need middle of the road storage performance. So I might go and say, okay, I want to buy uh, two cores and, and maybe instead of buy, rent's a better term for it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rent uh, 10 hard drives and I'll rent two SSDs. And those are now 
mine on a rental basis as a subscriber. I can do whatever I want with that capability. It's always mine. And so if another virtual machine comes in and wants to, and it's also high performance, I've got my capabilities already set aside. Okay? So that ensures the exact performance that that person is paying for, no matter what happens in the rest of the environment. Now, the big question is, okay, well, how do I do that and make that cost effective? Well, then we also leverage scale out storage, right? So now we scale this controller technology out. So we have multiple systems, but they're all acting as one pool. And then, so now instead of 32 cores, I might have 128 cores total. I might have 300 hard drives. I might have 75 SSDs, each one of these fully loaded. Okay, again, the same capabilities. I still go in and buy the cores I need. I, I go in and buy the hard drives I need. I go in and buy the SSDs I need. I go in, I, and I've neglected to put this up there. I also buy the RAM on each controller that I need. So maybe the RAM's being used for caching or buffering or something like that. And so this gives me a great architecture, certainly from a provider perspective, because now I can, with a lot of assurance, go to the, uh, one of my customers or subscribers and say, you, dial in what you want, right? Uh, it gives me, as a uh, enterprise, a lot of capabilities, because again, I can go to that line of business and say, you dial in what you want. Now, what also makes this very cloud-like is as a subscriber, I can tune this up and down, right? So I'm not locked into buying uh, two SSDs or 20 SSDs or whatever. Let's say, for example, I have a process that once a month requires a lot of performance, and the rest of the time it's kind of okay. Well, let's say that's this configuration here, right, where I've got two cores, 10 hard drives, and two SSDs, but now let's say I've got to run payroll, or I've got to do an end of the month close, or something like that. I might go in and say, okay, for this week, or this day, or this hour, I want to rent 10 SSDs, or I don't know, maybe I want to rent 20 SSDs. Now I've got the additional high-speed capacity. My application can leverage that. I can close my books or run my payroll or whatever the process might be. I can do it much, much faster. Another example might be a seasonal situation. So we're coming up on Valentine's Day. Maybe you're a, a florist and you want to make sure you're very high performance for the next three weeks. This would allow you to do that. So then when you return to sort of normal operating conditions, you just unbuy or, or turn in your SSDs and you go back to two. So again, it's a rental, and so you could start with two SSDs most of the time, and then when you hit a peak season or a peak time in a month or a peak time of year, you expand it out, and then when you're done, you go right back to where you were. So it becomes an extremely cost-effective way to apply performance specifically when you need to. So that's multi-tenant storage, and, and this is a, a really great way to keep it as isolated as possible, yet still leverage a shared infrastructure.